Now, go ahead. Now I'll kill you. You guinea brat. One of the great scenes in the movie The Godfather, Carlo, Gianni Russo, and uh, his book is out. You've heard us talk about it all morning long. He'll be on with Jesse Palmer later, Daily Mail. It's in about 30 million households across America. He's done tons of inter- interviews and will do tons more. The name of the book is Hollywood Godfather, My Life in the Movies and the Mob. Johnny Russo walks this walk and talks the talk. What a life, a worthy read. That from Robert De Niro, a guy that admittedly was a mobster working for Frankie Costello. Turned that into an amazing movie career and a big-time celebrity. Still looks like a million bucks. Yes, he does. Sitting here to my Only left. Only a million. It's supposed to be a B by now. Yeah, you know, let's go with a billion dollars. <laughs> the great Johnny Russo, everybody. Good morning, Johnny. Well, How are you? Guys. Guys. Thank you. Good morning. I appreciate it. So, um, <laughs> where do you start? I mean, the book mentions everybody from Pablo Escobar to John Gotti to Marilyn Monroe right. to the Kennedy brothers to Frank Sinatra. But I guess we'll start with this. And it's always a lame but obligatory question. Why now, after all these years, did you decide to write this book? Well, it's a good question because, um, as I was just saying, come up on the elevator, the only one guy that I was still worried about that was alive just died March 7th. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Is that wow. really true? Yeah, Carmine Persico. Persico, yeah. yeah. Ah, well, I wrote about him in the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the only guy that's alive. So with that said, the reason why now, uh, I had a meeting about two years ago where a, a major boss... A, I, I, well, I guess I could tell his name. But anyway, he died, and he said, go ahead, write, let the book out. Let the book out. See, how, how's a guy like Henry Hill all those years going on Howard Stern show, going all over? Well, don't, don't compare me to Howard. No, but, Henry Hill, he's a rat. No, I understand. <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'm saying, he was a rat. Everybody wanted him dead. Now, all those guys were in prison or dead already, but there were still some guys alive. He never had any issue going out there, writing books, doing movies, doing radio shows. Well, I have no issue, but I'm, I'm still involved in Sicily. I just do a lot of business. Okay. You know, this year I'm doing about $3 billion oh in importing and exporting with the Greco brothers out of, out of Chicago. Mm-hmm. Legit. But, legit. Oh, totally legit. Totally legit. Yeah, but still when I go over there, those old guys don't, don't stop. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, Johnny Russo, uh, just from the beginning, you were born and raised in Little Italy. Uh, you had polio. You spent five years in Bellevue as a kid. which The, great, pretty- the greatest thing that ever happened to me. But it was horrible to sound to read about that you were there, your parents. I, I don't think they visited you while you were there. Well, I didn't know that. See, I was, so, I was so confused because here I am. I went there, was like seven and a half years of age, and uh, nobody came. Like, my birthday's December 12th, same as Sinatra, which right. changed my life when I heard it on the radio. And... Uh, but I was quarantined, and they didn't know what was going on with that disease. And, and if, well, it, it, because we are kind of short on time, your parents didn't visit. It was terrible. It led you to meet Frank Costello. But the way you learn to walk, I guess, is the the amusing part. Uh, oh, Dolores, Dolores I yes, love him. <laughs> that's almost sacrilegious because Dolores was a candy striper, <laughs> and she was Carlo Gambino's niece. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, listen, and, and yet you, you she, she, she pulled her shirt down. Yeah, and that's how he learned oh to God. walk. Yeah. Walk. He, yeah. he walked over to uh, the uh, you know. The, the, the fruit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I thought that was very amusing. Down yeah. on Mulberry Street. Now, your father didn't come visit you, but even if he could, he may not have. Because you're talking about your dad in the book that wasn't around much, was living his own life, doing his own thing, and also worked, I guess, with, with was it Albert on the station? Who did your father uh, kind of hang around well, with? No, well, not that he hung around with. They didn't even like him. Yeah. But he had a no-show job right. with Tony Anastasia and the, and the Pierce. Right. No, but my father, I mean, talking about that, I couldn't say hello to my father unless he acknowledged me first on the street. Yes. Yeah, he, yeah. he didn't want people to think he was married and had kids. Yeah. I mean, that's right, 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 right. right. <laughs> and, Jeez. That's, uh, and that, people that's, think I'm a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough one. And he broke the mold of Italian fathers, as you point out in the book, who are very family-oriented. Your dad was a little bit Well, there's different. a lot of those guys in the neighborhood, though. You know, they're real buffoons. They, they're wannabes. So yeah, yeah. they walk around like there's somebody or nobody, but out of the respect of certain friends, yeah. he, you know, when they, you know, they get jobs and they do what they but do. But back then, they were uh, just about, everybody in that neighborhood was actually oh, yeah. mafioso hooked up. I mean, I, I was telling Bernie, I went uh, two years ago, I moved back from Miami a couple of years ago, and I took my wife and my daughter you and my son. You still have your tan, though. How come? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, so we went to the um, to the festival, you know, oh in like San Gennaro, and uh, in Little Italy. And I remember that Monday morning, I walked in. I said, "What the hell happened to Little Italy?" I mean, what? what from where you talk, uh, what you, I know, but when you yeah. talk about it from fifty years ago, when you grew up to where it is today, I mean, you see people 
in Little League today that were never in your neighborhood 50 oh years ago. Oh, my God, yeah. But you know what it was? Everybody that made money, they went to the boroughs. Yeah. And then they didn't want to come back to the neighborhood. And the fools that they are and were, they never bought the buildings. That's how they get squeezed out. Right. If they right, bought right. those buildings, there's very few families that actually own their building. But now the rents down there are ridiculous. Oh, yeah. My, my apartment, that was, uh, I think... Sixteen dollars in nineteen forty nine. In which you is lived three thousand cl- dollars. Yeah. Wow, it's crazy. Wow. And you lived in a closet. Your family had you yeah. sleeping in a closet next to well, a that's kerosene. That's why I'm brain here. dead. I have to sniff <laughs> yeah. kerosene. Yeah, yeah no, I know. Listen, the book is the Hollywood Godfather: My Life in the Movies and the Mob. Gianno Russo and uh, Gianni, excuse me, Johnny Russo and Johnny. Listen, so uh, let's uh, to further it along. You, you met. You hooked up with Frank Costello uh, outside a hotel. And it led you to meet Grace Kelly, Ava Gardner, but the uh, the piece de resistance was you were doing you were shampooing Marilyn Monroe's hair, and then uh, well, do you believe that? Other man? things, I know that's wild. No, it's crazy. Well, I was about the fourth head of hair because I had to go to continuation school, and they put me in Wilford Academy, and I'm saying, Frank, would you put me in there for? I don't want to grow up to be a hairdresser. Yeah, yeah. And then. As soon as I showed up that morning, I saw all these young chicks. I was just like a candy store. I said, I love this school. Nice. <laughs> and then they came in for Shampoo Boys for Lily Dashe, a big salon on 56th and Park. And Kenneth it was, and, and Mark Sinclair. And I think they were trying to do me. But the thing is that uh, fourth head of hair, Marilyn Monroe. I couldn't believe it. Well, and you yeah. say you, you say that um, you had done a five-year stint at a university jail. And when you got out... Um, she gave you a hug, talking about Marilyn Monroe, right. and you said what you love most about her, I guess besides her ass, was um, was that she was childlike. She was like she was like a little kid. That's what you loved about her, right? No, not only that. I mean, this girl, all she wanted was a hug too. We yeah. had a lot of comparisons. That's not all she wanted, Johnny. Yeah. Well, no, no. well, I <laughs> well, found that out later. They slept together. <laughs> didn't, didn't you sleep together when you were fifteen? Yeah, you yeah. spent the weekend with yeah. her in a bed. That wasn't the only time. Yeah, no, it was a couple of times. Right, right. Oh no, many times after that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I got to know her as a friend, but that's. I mean, that's who she was. That's why so many guys. And you know, took years later, Marlon Brando's talking to me about it while we're you know him and you know, I got close. Yeah. And I smiled a little. And he says, "Don't tell me you were there." Yeah. <laughs> so he says, "Tell me one thing. If you were really there, I would know." I said, you're talking about the scar on the left side of her leg? Ah, <laughs> unbelievable. See, see? unbelievable. I told you, I told you. Unbel- now, you also have a theory of how, uh, how she died, right? How did Malamon Road die? No, I have a, a Yeah, you theory. do, come on. No, it's a process of elimination. It's, not, it's more than a theory. Okay, so what is it? What's, what's the answer? Well, I, we, I, I was always the eyes and ears after the uh, you know, Appalachian, that whole fiasco. Costello would never go to these things, but he had to have somebody go. So he always sent the kid. I was known as the kid for so many years. Again, not knowing he was protecting me. I said, "Why don't you introduce him?" He said, "No, no, you don't want to. Uh, people, you don't want people to know who you are." And so, that's why, even in the picture of Marilyn Monroe, and, and, and I think it's in the book, I turned my head. He always said, "Don't be on camera." Right. Doesn't because, it remind you a little bit, by the way, Bernie, of uh, Sonny and the kid in Charles Palmer Terry's The Bronx he Tales. Does. The kid, and you always yeah. wanted to protect That's right. him, and right. kind of like you and Frankie Costello, right? Well, Very that was, similar. That, that was made up, though. Right, I understand. <laughs> right, right. And, and yeah. you're speaking yeah. of, that, maybe they they saw my f- story first. Right, right. Now, when, when you get to this Marilyn Monroe thing, prior to that, this is Kennedy got elected, and the mob was uh, the mob guys were mad. That well, the he whole th- idea when Joe approached Frank, Costello, Frank Sinatra, who you were, who were friends with. I, well, somewhat. <laughs> yeah. He, he was another strange dude. But in other words, they thought he was going to be friendly towards the mob, and he ends up hiring his brother Bobby, and they were anything but friendly to the mob. So well, they had He this... didn't realize, I don't think, him and his son, uh, Joe didn't, how much right, the Bobby dad. hated yeah. their whole lifestyle. Yeah. Because Bobby was the last kid, and mother was like, you know, I mean, what they did to that poor mother, the father. He'd bring women home. Sure. And those boys at 16... Well, on their 16th birthday, he had somebody there make him a man That's in their right. house. Wow. Right, right. And this right. guy was nuts. But the good news was he was so close to Costello, they made $30 million each during Prohibition. Wow. They were partners yeah, in Prohibition. Yeah, yeah. So, right. so, so, you, so you were telling us that uh, so Costello would not want to go to these things. He would send you, getting back to how you think Marilyn Monroe died. She was helping set up. The Kennedys. What they that's, wanted that's to what do was like they did to Jimmy Hoffa. They, they took pictures of Jimmy Hoffa years prior to this because he's a cross-dresser. And he would always denounce the mafia until the Keefe Commission. And so they thought 
They didn't get what they wanted. They're going to blackmail the Kennedys because they were supposed to get Cuba back. They promised if John became president, they'd invade Cuba, give him all the casinos back, and everybody's a win-win. Mm, right. Bobby comes in. He's not going for it. He convinced his brother there's no missiles on that island. We're not going. So we got nothing. Not we, but I mean the mob got nothing, and that's what this was about. They thought they'd get Marilyn, Bobby, and John one more time together, take the pictures. The mistake Marilyn made on Saturday night, I was outside the bungalow hearing a scream. So I'm, go- so I'm going to the press. She's done with the Kennedy brothers. Oh, yeah, yeah. She told Bobby that to his face, and that was it, man. So, yeah. so, so how'd they do it? They, they shot her with something? And- so no, no, three no, no, days no. later, she died, and you surmise that they, uh, well, they killed you her. Well, you know why? Uh, 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 I, I could tell you they why. They shot something in her pubes or something? Yeah, no, not air. air that's all. Air. They injected right. air. He, there, right. there was a guy, they called him the doctor for a lot of reasons. He was an anesthesiologist, but I think failed the test. Oh. And uh, all he did was in the pubic hairs, yeah. you couldn't see the puncture marks. Wow. And in, in that area, like even a man, the fiopian organ, because mm-hmm. I wanted to be an assassin, so I learned how to do that early sure. on. Well, it's good to have uh, I cleaned up my act. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. 1-800-848-WABC. So much more to get to, including how you end up on the set of The Godfather, all your other relationships. It's already been a fascinating 10 minutes. Don't go any more, anywhere, I should say, more with actor Johnny Russo right after these words. Ernie and Sid in the morning. Johnny Russo is here. Hollywood Godfather is the book, My Life in the Movies and the Mob. We just spent 10 minutes talking about a bunch of fascinating stories, including the Kennedys and Marilyn Monroe. Let's get to the, uh, the important stuff. We'll get to Gotti and Pablo Escobar and Frank Sinatra. But, and, of course, the uh, biggest crime of the century. Right. But we want to get to how, in fact, you ended up on the set. Because without the Godfather, Johnny, quite frankly, you wouldn't be here. So how do you get up on the you set? You got that right. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you get too up on the, <laughs> on the set of The Godfather? And then you can tell the story, of course, about how Marlon Brando wasn't thrilled you were there, ask you a ton of questions. And in the end, you guys turned out to be very, very good friends. Well, what happened was uh, my ego, I was like 25 years of age, and the book just came out. Mario Puzo. Mario Puzo's book. In fact, it came out in 1969. It's the 50th anniversary now. So I had someone read it to me, and I always wanted to be an actor, and then they had something in the paper they were going to use unknowns. So I figured this is my shot. So I hired a crew. I shot a scene for Michael, a scene for Sonny, a scene for Carlo, and submitted it to Paramount. Then I get a letter saying, we, sorry we misled you, we know you spent some dollars on this. And then I read that Joe Colombo was picking in the FBI building, and he don't want this movie made. So I figured this is my shot, because I know Joe. They, it's always about the buck. Mm. And they were selling stupid lapel buttons, mm. a buck a button, red, white, and green pile. So I go to see him in Brooklyn. I said, Joe, you're missing a great opportunity here. He said, how? I said, why don't you take the meeting with them? Because at the time, there was a young attorney, still my attorney, Barry Schlotnick. I said, Barry comes with you. I'll arrange it. And I didn't know if I could. I said, I'll arrange it. We'll go to the Gulf and Western building, which is the Trump and uh, uh, Columbus Circle. And what you're going to ask for, if you are happy, let them shoot the movie. Then you'll have the world premieres in every major city. You could charge $100 a ticket. That's how the whole thing got done. Yeah. But they went there. They fought for certain things, obviously. They didn't want to say WAP and Guinea. And but your time's very upset. Yeah. They were starting fight. There were fights. And they, they, they even uh, outside the, the studios, they, were, they made oh a very God. big deal oh about no, it. They made a big deal out yeah. of it. Yeah. That was Colombo's whole thing. It was the Italian-American yeah. pride. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, uh, uh, what is it called? American Italian and Defamation League. Right, 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 right. But he was picking the FBI building. He got called downtown on one Sunday and told him, what are you, crazy? This is a secret organization. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. And he's picking in the FBI building. I and mean, sadly, he was dead within a year of that, a uh, year or two, well, I think. Uh, that's funny because the next rally, one year later, right. the second rally at Columbus Circle, I get a call from Tommy Bellotti, who was like my best man in two weddings, not one. He was, of course, Paul Castellano's limo driver, gunned down outside of Sparks by John Gotti. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so he said, are you going to that rally? I said, yeah. He said, you can't go. I said, what are you talking about? I'm on the dais. He said, you're not going. And I was staying at the Park Lane, even though my apartment was on 61st. I wanted to see where all the stars would kind of come out every yeah. morning, everybody taking pictures of you. Nice. So I went out the back door on 58th Street, took the end train down to Canal Street. I'm sitting at Angelo's restaurant, and I hear that he was shot. That created another big problem. I didn't get into it in the book. like right. Yes. Because right. when they saw the investigation photos, 
my seat had my name on it, and it was that I wasn't the only guy on it. And that's it. <laughs> that's <again>. wild. And <laughs> so, but you had uh, a prior word, obviously. Well, I, mean, I didn't know what it was. You got a, sort of a heads up to stay the hell away because that's something's going said. down. Yeah. And it was so basically because you intervened though between what was going on with the Italians and the movie that almost secured, uh, secured you a spot in the film because you oh, intervened. Did. That yeah. got you the that no, got you the gig. Yeah, because when we had right. the meeting the next day. My deal with, I told Joe, I said, we get this on. I want to play Michael Sonia Carlo. <laughs> I didn't know. Right. And, so and, and, so they, they, they let me know that, this is interesting, you may not know this. They already, I said, well, who's playing Michael? They said, Sonny. I mean, who's playing Michael? Uh, J- James Kahn. James Kahn was playing Michael first. Right. Really? Carmine Caridi was playing Sonny because he was in a play called The Man from La Mancha. And they thought it should be this big guy, which Carmine was. And Francis Coppola wanted uh, Pacino. At that time, he only did one movie called Panic in Needle Park. And he fought for him. And they moved Sonny, I mean Michael, uh, James Caan, to play Sonny, which was the smaller role, which Jimmy was pissed at that. Right. And then I got in this movie, and nobody, you know, I never did anything in my life. Which was what you were talking about, the rehearsal with Brando. Right. right. That was nuts. Well, he asked you, he said, uh, what, what have you done on theater? What movies have you been in? All these questions, you had no answers, of course, because you had no experience. And uh, then you, you kind of let him know, maybe you should back off just a little bit, Marlon. Well, you know what? But, <laughs> no, I'll tell you why. Because he called Francis over, and he broke down the whole script. I never broke down the script. I don't even know what I was doing there. And he said, you know, his guy's got to be a great actor. He undermines my family. He marries my daughter. He breaks it all down. Kills my son. And I'm, and I'm seeing, he's trying to talk me out of this role. So I don't know, again, protocol on the script. I said, Francis, go over there a minute. But you can't dismiss the director. The guy's in charge even in the rehearsal. <laughs> yeah. And then I did the next sacrilege. I put my arm around Brando, and I walked him. Because they had the, the rehearsal on 119th Street at Patsy's in Harlem. Right. That Tony Solero's joint. You know, he I, says he put his arm around Brando. Bernie, same thing with Imus. They were, like Imus. They were told, don't look at him. Oh, yeah. Don't make any eye contact uh-huh. with Marlon Brando. But, like, same thing. But, but the rules didn't apply necessarily Not to, to, to Johnny Russo. <laughs> well, no, the only reason was I'm, I'm ready to go out the door. This guy's going to get me fired. Yeah. I just had a party like a couple of nights before, and everybody said, get out of here. You're not in this movie. Get out. How are you going to be in this movie? Right. And now this guy's getting me fired. Now I really look like an idiot. Well, good for you. So then I took him to the side, and uh, it was very funny. <laughs> and I, t- I, I did it whispering, which I think was more menacing, I guess, because so I didn't want everybody whisper to Whisper now, it. so it's like real. Okay. Like, yeah. I said, let me just tell you something, okay? Yeah. I know who you are. You're a big actor. You screwed us up for me. I will suck on your heart. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Oh, oh, oh. I love it. And he goes, I feel it now. That was great acting. No, then he stepped back. <laughs> yeah. No, he stepped back and he's looking at me. I don't know if the guy was going to call a cop. What are you going to do? <laughs> That's great. He said, that was great. Yeah. You could do this, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, and I wasn't could. acting, And bitch. by the way, you, you, you nailed it right there. But, uh, right. but Listen, the book is Hollywood Godfather. We're talking to Johnny Russo. He played Carlo, of course, in, in The Godfather. And i got to mention a couple of book signings. Uh, this week, Wednesday, bookends, bookstore, Ridgewood, New Jersey, uh, 7 o'clock on Thursday at the Barnes & Noble, 86 in Lexington, and then next week, uh, Eastchester, Barnes & Noble, and uh, the week after that, book review in Huntington, folks. Look it up. Uh, but i got to ask you this question, uh, Johnny Russo. Please. The, uh, you were I- instrumental, according to you in the book, in the assassination of uh, John F. Kennedy. No, don't say that. No. Well, you, you, <laughs> no, no. Listen, you, I was a messenger. You, I didn't know what I was delivering. Right, I knew you, it was money. I did that all the time. But uh, that's all I did, and I, I didn't. Know. If I knew the target, I loved John Kennedy. I hung out you with him. You were an inadvertent uh, player. Yeah. And you went from. Uh, you I'm actually glad you de- cleaned that up. You delivered, <laughs> right. a, you delivered a message from a mob boss in uh, New Orleans. Carlos Marcellus, yeah. Marcellus, that's right, up to uh, Frank Costello. And it, Everywhere. And the, me- the message was, it's, it's on. on. That was it. And Imagine you, next, flying all those nights. Right. And he had a big dish of uh, Boston Von <laughs> Bianco. He knows I like it. Yeah. And he says, you're not sitting down. And I said, okay. <laughs> yeah. So he gave you 30 grand and get the hell out of here. No, I gave it to him. Oh, you gave it to and him. And he gave me the message. Okay, so so for everybody who thinks Lee Harvey Oswald, blah, 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 you're here to say. He was one of the shooters, though. He was one of the shooters. Right. But uh, it was a mob hit. It was not. Uh, it was mob hit. And I'll tell you something else you ain't going to believe. Right. And C- I believe. I've, I've, I've the, always thought San Giancomo killed him. But C- CIA was involved, too. I believe that, too. I'm and Linda Bain Johnson brought him to the target. 
Lyndon Baines Johnson brawl. Hey, I wouldn't be surprised if DiMaggio was in on it, too. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? You know, but but the, the point is, though, uh, they, they, that it was done by the mob, and then they put you on a boat. And you had seen Lee Harvey Oswald in New Orleans in this meeting. By where, mistake. He was in right. the bathroom. And then the, the next time you saw him was on the boat when you were on heading off to Spain. Newspaper. Uh, under the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, you saw him uh, uh, arrested as everybody was uh, it was televised. That was the next day, actually. That's right. Yeah. And that's how you knew what you had done. And then who yeah. hired Jack Ruby? Jack, Jack Ruby always worked for the mob out of Chicago. Always. He was running all their stuff in Texas. So he, I mean, they, and you know what most people don't know? After that, 73 other people were killed. Anybody that was involved, that's why Costello got me out of the right, country. Right, right. Yeah, that's right. Well, actually, they mentioned that in the movie uh, that uh, Kevin Costner did. Let's take a short break, come back a little more time. We'll hit on Sinatra, Pablo Escobar, call it a day. Hollywood Godfather, Johnny Russo, we're coming right back. Bernie and Sid in the morning. Johnny Russo, Hollywood Godfather, my life in the movies and the mob. Tweet blowing up at Sid Rosenberg, got Bernie and Sid, 40 minutes of amazing radio. Let's get to Frank. Uh, you wanted to uh, to sing. Next thing you know, you're in your bathing suits together. He's giving you the same advice that Tommy Dorsey, according to you in the book, gave him, which is expand your lungs. you got to breathe. breathe. And the next thing you know, Johnny Russo's the next Bobby Vinton, right? That's it. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I like Bobby, though. Yeah. No, I, I got lucky with that. I, I mean, I, I, the good news is what I've tried to do and wanted to do in my life, I was privileged to do it. Well, how would you get to yeah. meet Sinatra in the first place? How did that whole thing get set up? Well, I, as... The first year I was in the hospital, the first four or five months, my birthday's December 12th. So I hear on the radio, today's Frank Sinatra's birthday. That gave me some hope because they broke it all down. It's an Italian-American, Hoboken, and just I needed something. Sure. And three or four years later, because of my association with Costello, I'm hearing him do a sound check at the Copa. So he's seen this kid walk around, and they said, no, he's already right, with us. And then later on, I said, I got to tell you a story because he figured you talk to me now. You know, who's this kid? And I told him, I said, you know, you're the reason I'm alive today. Wow. And he said, what are you talking about? And I told him the story. He cheered up. Wow. Okay. And, and we stayed friends. How about that? And, you know, and but he's a strange guy to be a friend. Yeah, with. a miserable guy, too. Oh, no God. doubt about it. Speak, drunk. Speaking <laughs> of which, um, you don't like uh, John Gotti Sr. Not only because he screwed you with Pablo Escobar, but because uh, he was a big mouth and he was... Uh, he, no, I mean, not, not, not that I didn't like him. He, he didn't... For the th he was always about this thing of ours that he was always talking about. And he broke all the rules. Yes, he did. Drugs. Right. I mean, right. everything. Uh, not only that, he made his son. Yeah. He had his son made. His mother's Jewish. How could yeah. he be made? But he bought me once. I drank at Regine, so I was like... Oh, there. Well, yeah, he did. It's unacceptable. <laughs> I probably sent you a bottle of Cristal. He had he, he, 500 of them in the basement. Everybody yeah. would send him Cristal would be friends with him. Yeah. It's the only reason Regime stayed in. When he went to jail, he had a close. <laughs> no, it's true. He was there. I swear to God, I was there a couple of times. I saw him every time I was there. There and when um, Frankie Panisse... I know you know him, and Claire, they own La Mer in Brooklyn. Right. They opened up a restaurant across the street from the track in uh, Hollywood, in, uh, in Hallandale in Florida. Right. Celebrity Cafe, and John was always there. He always buy. Oh, yeah. He was very, very, uh, buying stuff for everybody. Always oh, very no, good no, like that. A nice guy. A nice guy. The only thing I like about John, you could win a lot of money with him betting against him. Right, he, he <laughs> lost every week. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Hey, okay. John, and he also, Steve Sharip is a friend of ours. He was there the night you shot the uh, Pablo Escobar guy. Yeah, in, I used in, to in the, hire the all the kids. While he was going to UNLV, I had a lot of those guys, and you know, the size of Steve. Yeah. And um, he was petrified of the guy. And I hired them to go over there, and he, he, I ain't going over there. So then I went over, but he was there the night I shot the guy between the eyes. Yeah. He couldn't believe it. That was self-defense, though. It was fun. Oh, no, definitely. Fun. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, the guy was hassling a woman, and he cut you in the chin. He stabbed the lady in the face with a yes. crystal bottle. Right, right, right. And then slit my throat. And you, I can still see the scar right yeah. there. I got a hundred something stories. Look at you, huh? God, you got some story, Johnny Russo, to tell. And uh, the, don't forget, folks, bookends uh, Wednesday night, Ridgewood, New Jersey, 6 o'clock, and Barnes and & Noble in New York City, 86, and Lexington at 7 o'clock on Thursday. Right. So how many people are going to die now because of this book, John? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't care. I, I got an armored truck downstairs. Johnny Russo. <laughs> The book is uh, he's a great guy. A Hollywood Godfather. Man, can he tell a story? My life in the movies and the mob. Johnny Russo. And you had help with Patrick Piccarelli, who's... Uh, by the way, wrote a book about Jimmy the Wags, who I know, oh, I know. personally. Uh, Bo Deedle's, uh one of Bo Deedle's guys. Right. 
But uh, anyway, Hollywood Godfather, folks, what a read, man. You are like the Forrest Gump of the mob and of politics and of entertainment. It's unbelievable. I'm glad I lived them long enough to write the book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did, too. You look great. You sound great. Johnny Russo, Hollywood Godfather. Thanks for appearing. No, thank you, guys. I on the Bernie that. and Sid show. We, we appreciate you. And uh, we're coming right back, folks. She.